Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein. Happy Thanksgiving week. And today, for a quick hitter, I'm going to give you my top Thanksgiving week mob murders of all time. I'm sure there's some uh, I'll miss, so feel free to chime in on the comments and let me know if you have any great Thanksgiving week gangland slains that we should uh, talk about and, and give insight into. Please like, subscribe, share. Uh, the OG pod, let everyone know what we're doing here at the Original Gangsters Podcast and um, spread the word. So I'm going to start with a couple uh, murders, mob murders that actually happened on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, we'll start in Chicago, 2001. Uh, Cicero mob lieutenant Anthony Tony the Hatchet Chiramonte is murdered in the vestibule of a Brown's fried chicken restaurant. Uh, it was after uh, most people had 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 their Thanksgiving meal. He was uh, meeting, was supposed to meet someone there, and he was murdered by a, a hit team. We know who who the hit team was. Uh, Bobby Cooper was the driver, and Tough Tony Calabrese was the shooter. Bobby Cooper flipped. Uh, Tough Tony Calabrese died in prison a couple of years ago, doing a a, a big uh, a prison sentence for extortion and armed robbery, I believe. Uh, but Shiramonti had, uh, there was an issue in regime change. Shiramonti had gone to prison in the early nineties with uh, Jimmy Marcello and, uh, Sam Carlisi and all those guys. And there had been, you know, new powers that had took, o took over, uh, Cicero. And when Shiramonti got out of prison, he started to butt heads with those guys. Uh, Marcello, uh, wasn't coming out for another two years at that point. And it looked like there was a, it doesn't look like, there was an altercation the week before Shiramonti's murder. Uh, he met uh, at a, I think it was a pancake house with uh, Jimmy Marcello's brother, Mickey, and Frank the German Schweiss, and was told to, I think, calm down and, and stop making threats uh, to people that he shouldn't have been. There was a, a verbal altercation that erupted in the restaurant, and then outside the restaurant, a physical altercation where Tony Chiramonti pushed uh, uh, Frank the German twice a week later he was dead uh, so that's in Chicago another thing that happened on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit back in the 1930s my hometown 1937 Thanksgiving evening Harry Millman uh, who was one of the top hitmen for the Jewish Purple Gang uh, went to Boeski's Deli for a uh, Thanksgiving evening toast with his uh, bodyguards and he had been feuding with the Italian mafia for a couple of years at that point. And the, the Italians outsourced the murder to New York and the murder incorporated group uh, who were the, you know, the most vicious killers in New York city and the, in the early to mid 20th century. And they came into Detroit just for about an hour, came into the train station. They were taken to Boeski's deli. They gunned down Harry Millman and then got back on a train and, and, and were in New York uh, by the next day. So um, it, it was very high profile at the time, kind of the last of the purple gang. Uh, at that point, the purple gang ceased to exist. Harry Millman was having a difficult time taking orders from Italians and, and paid the ultimate price. Uh, moving over to Boston for a second, couldn't you know? Couldn't to talk about Thanksgiving week murders without uh, you know Boston's favorite mob serial killer, Whitey Bulger. Uh, he killed two people on Thanksgiving week, 1975. One of those murders uh, was uh, um, depicted in the movie. Black Mass with Johnny Depp. Uh, that was the Tommy King murder. King had uh, insulted. He was a member of, of Whitey Bulger's winter winter Whitey Bulger's Winter Hill Gang and uh, hung out at, at his uh, uh, at his bar and had insulted Bulger. Uh, Bulger killed Tommy King, and then a couple hours later, he killed a guy named Buddy Leonard. So uh, he was busy on Thanksgiving, 1975. Whitey Bulger and, and his uh, uh, demented self uh, going over to. New York, and then a little bit in Canada, um, New York Mafia Don, who was deported to Canada, Salvatore Montaigne, Salva Ironworker, uh, ran the Bananos on the street for 
uh, four or five years and then was deported to Canada. He lasted about two years in Canada, tried to uh, take over the mafia in Canada. He was killed uh, Thanksgiving week 2011 in a power struggle within a power struggle. Uh, you know, he's an, a fascinating character. I, I would, uh, you know, if you want to learn more about him, please go ahead because there's a lot to learn. Go uh, check out uh, all the, the great books uh, that have been written on the Canadian Mafia War and then uh, Anthony Stefano and guys that have written about the Bananos. Uh, finishing up uh, Thanksgiving week 1973 in Rochester, a murder that really decimated the entire Rochester Mafia. Uh, it took about 10 years, um, but but the murder of Vincent Massaro, a.k.a. Jimmy the Hammer, basically, for all intents and purposes, uh, was was a um, was a death shot to the Rochester group. All the leaders of the Rochester Mafia were locked up for the Massaro murder. Eventually, they were let out and the case was tossed. But when they were gone, the people they had left in charge didn't want to relinquish the reins. And it turned into a huge Mafia uh, shooting and bombing war that spelled the end of the Rochester Mafia. It can all be traced back to the Thanksgiving week 1973 murder of enforcer Jimmy the Hammer Massaro. I'm sure there's a lot more uh, out there in the history of the uh, of the Mafia on Thanksgiving, but those are my, my top Thanksgiving week mob hits. For OG Pod, I'm Scott Bernstein. Out. Thank you.